FYI, we're going to speak with the CTO of RSA, ASAP, from DC24, BRB. Secure Ninja. We're here at DEF CON 24, and I'm speaking with Zulfikar Ramazan. He is the CTO of RSA, and you actually just came over from Black Hat. Correct, yeah. How was that show? Phenomenal. I mean, I've never seen the vendor floor so busy. The conference has just grown so much over the last few years. And I remember back in 2008, 2009, there were maybe a handful of vendors at the conference. And this year, it was an explosion. And I think it's a sign that the industry has grown and matured. And we've got a lot of work ahead of us. Absolutely, that is a good sign. And of course, RSA is going to have a big presence at Black Hat. What's been going on with RSA lately? Any new developments? Uh, it's been pretty phenomenal. We've been focusing on things like network monitoring and intrusion detection and being able to find the worst kinds of scenarios and threats that our adversaries are putting upon us. So this year, for example, at Black Hat, we had the honor of being one of the key technologies inside of the Black Hat Network Operations Center. So we were protecting all the Black Hat attendees from the threats they were seeing on their wireless networks while the conference was going on. And we saw some pretty crazy, wild stuff, if you can imagine that for a moment. So that's been pretty exciting. We've been also focusing on taking security and talking about it not just as a technical issue, but as a business issue. Because a lot of our customers today aren't just talking about technical concepts anymore. CEOs and board members want to understand security issues. And if we go to the CEO and board and talk about buffer overflow vulnerabilities and SQL injection and cross-site scripting, right. their eyes are going to glaze over. So from our perspective, it's really about how do we go to our customers and help them engage in a conversation with their CEOs and boards and translate those low-level technical details into the language of risk and of business. Right. And that's been a winning combination for us, and we're really excited about moving forward in that direction. Absolutely. That's been something that's been in the media a lot lately, a lot lately getting the executive level people involved in cybersecurity. And of course, as a CTO, that's probably a lot of what you do. But back it up to this live monitoring you were doing at Black Hat, exactly what sort of attacks were you seeing coming in? Well, we saw a variety of things. First of all, you got to keep in mind that Black Hat is a very unique place to be when you're doing network monitoring. And certainly a lot of the briefings and the trainings are purposely creating attacks within classroom settings. Right. So you've got to be aware of that. But in a couple of cases, we saw people whose systems were already owned, even though they were inner training. So we said, oh, first of all, this must be training behavior. It's probably something that's happening inside of a classroom. We investigated more deeply, and we found out that actually one person within the training didn't know, but his computer had been compromised by the zero access Trojan. And so we went up to him in the middle of the briefing and asked him to step aside and mentioned that his laptop probably was infected, and, and uh, he went ahead and realized it actually was. So that was a pretty wild thing to see. Uh, we're seeing a lot of funny things, like people doing clear text passwords, the usual type of thing going on. Uh, we saw a group of people who were planning an attack on the Luxor. Uh, not, not, a, not a physical attack, but more of a hack on the Luxor. Right. And we notified the uh, appropriate people about that. Excellent. And so that was kind of interesting. So I guess this particular community is not just about um, your typical enterprise setting of malware or right. C2 traffic, that sort of thing. It's really much more diverse. Right. And that's what makes network monitoring so fun, because you're not really focusing on any specific instance or issue. You're really trying to gain deeper visibility into the network and onto the endpoints to figure out the best course of attack for dealing with today's threats. Right. Yeah, it must be a unique environment, because I know a lot of what, what goes on here is the pranks, so there are prank attacks, but you actually saw true malicious attacks. Absolutely. Uh, we see people trying to break in all the time. We see people trying to engage in all sorts of nefarious behaviors. Uh, some folks are literally planning their attacks on the knock, over the knock, so we could see that they were planning the attack and we could put a stop to it a bit earlier on. Right. But there's a lot of shenanigans that go on at, that, at, the, at the show. And on top of that, we're doing things like monitoring not just the, the overall network, we're looking at the computers that are used for registration because that's a really simple way to start trying to break into a network. Yeah. We've got separate monitoring just for the knock itself uh -huh. because we want to make sure if somebody tries to compromise the actual network operation center, we can see that and take care of it. Uh, and so it's a pretty wild experience, and I was just looking at it peripherally, but we had a team of our engineers and some of our top people who do incident response and who look at threats all day, and they were sitting there, glass panes, figuring things out. The room was out of a movie scene. I mean, they had you know movies in the background, they had lights, they had music. The team members were wearing RSA t-shirts with lighted letters, and I think it made for a pretty fun experience. So those who actually had a chance to go through that knock yeah. uh, were in for a real treat. Right. That sounds like a cool thing to uh, demonstrate to the cybersecurity Absolutely. crowd. And then as far as the, uh, you know, getting executives more involved mm -hmm. in cybersecurity from a business aspect, what were you doing there to kind of spread awareness? So I had a lot of meetings with customers. I had a lot of meetings with our partners, with analysts, and, and so on and so forth. And we found is the whole notion of that business-driven security message 
was deeply resonating because every one of our customers is facing this problem now. The role of the CISO has changed dramatically in the last few years. Now, a few years back when security was not that interesting to most people, it was basically relegated to a small part of the IT department. And nowadays what we find is that that's no longer the case. And so our customers are required to make that deeper interface and to talk more deeply about security in a way that can be understood at a business level. And so they're excited about the fact that we're moving in a direction that can enable them to do their jobs much more successfully. And by the way, this has technical implications too. The reality is that if I want to go to my CEO for budget, I've got to be able to ask him what's important, not just from a technical lens, but why it's relevant to his business. I can't say I need a new widget because it's going to make my job faster. I got to say I need this thing because it's going to improve business continuity. It's going to reduce the risk of a failure in business continuity. It's going to impact business development by a certain amount. And if I can take all that together and draw financial conclusions, that's a very potent combination. I was going to say money, it saves and protects their money. And that's probably a big you know, message for the business owner. Absolutely. No, you have to do that in general. I think you have to talk to people in terms that make sense to them, not in terms that make sense to you. Right. Absolutely. Now with RSA, just working for RSA in general, you guys do a lot with encryption, obviously. What are some of the recent advancements or you know, ways that encryption is becoming better lately? Well, you know, encryption has been in the news considerably, especially with things like the Apple versus the FBI case and with the whole notion of exceptional access. And RSA, actually, interestingly enough, even though we've been historically known for encryption, we look at this encryption as maybe one part of an overall system. Mm -hmm. To me, nobody breaks the encryption in the system. They bypass it somehow. No one's going to sit there and try to find some new mathematical algorithm for getting past the okay. AES encryption al algorithm. They're going to find a way to avoid encrypting the data altogether or to find that backup tapes haven't been taken care of. And so our approach has always been about holistic security, about looking at the entire network, about understanding what's happening at the endpoint level, and advising our customers to really think about security in a more strategic fashion. Our customers historically have done things like buy point solutions. But today, point solutions are not the same thing as a security strategy for dealing with today's threats. Interesting. All right. Well, definitely keep up the great work with everything you're doing with RSA. And thanks so much for coming over to DEF CON before you head out and for speaking with us. Oh, my pleasure. It's always a fun time. And I just love the environment. I love the people and the energy that exists here. And I look forward to coming here every year because I get to see people that I often don't see for the whole year. And we get a chance right. to really interact and bond. And I'm looking forward to coming back next year. Yeah, definitely. And maybe we'll catch up with you at the RSA conference one year. Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Thank you. Thanks for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this episode from DEF CON 24. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you thought of the episode and also if you were at the conference this year or if you intend to go in the future. Also, if you haven't subscribed to Secure Ninja TV, be sure to do so with the red subscription button below. And we'll see you in the next episode. I'm Alicia Webb. Bye.